My friends, it's week nine of Dana White's Contender Series. We're drawn to the end, but I'm here with you this week, so let's celebrate, right? We shall rejoice. We've got a flyweight matchup here on the Contender Series week number nine, and it is a good one at that. We have Lucas Rocha. He's taken on Davi Bittencourt Costa. It used to be just Davi Bittencourt, and then all of a sudden sometime this week or, uh, you know, whatever, they just change it to Davi Costa. I don't know. So we're going to go with that. We're going to write it all out. Uh, Costa is 5-0 and in the last five, and Rocha is as well. Both guys with extensive records, 16-1, um, 14-3. So both guys have fought the who's who, at least, you know, a lot of fights. Not necessarily the best level of fights, but they've gotten better as they've gotten to this point in their careers. 5-0 and in the last five, like I said, so that's pretty impressive. We're going to start on the Costa side or the Bittencourt side, whatever you want it to be. He's got decent striking, and realistically, it's basically just set up by his grappling because he's much more a grappler first. But we're going to talk about the striking first. It's set up by that threat of the takedown, of which we'll cover in a moment. He's got athleticism as well that's going to make up for any lack of polish because he's not the most polished. He'll throw a jab out there that you're like, man, that was like, like yeah, it was all right, but it looked weird. But he hits hard. Same thing with his overhand because that threat of the overhand from the threat of the takedown, those two go hand in hand, okay? He does a very good job about using those together. The power is there. He hits very hard. He's very athletic. He's definitely not a striker, though, and if this stays in the striking, he's definitely going to be out of his realm. Now, when it comes to the grappling, dude's a solid grappler, okay? He shoots a very low shot, and he shoots in deep. He gets around the ankles, the, the shins, and just gets you and just pulls you to the mat. Does a very good job of that, and he's going to work to advanced position right away. Constant pressure on top. Always putting putting that weight through his opponents. And I don't know if any of you have uh, done any like uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu or anything like that, but sometimes there are, there, are, there are guys out there that when they get across you, right, even if they're not that big, they feel like they're 400 pounds. Some people just know how to put their weight through people. He's the guy that can do that, okay? He puts that weight heavy through somebody. At 125 pounds, it's really impressive how much pressure he puts down, and you can see it in the matchups. He has a very elbow-heavy ground-and-pound style as well. He's looking to land elbows the whole time, whether he's coming forward, he's coming back, or he's coming over the top. He's putting those elbows through his opponent, and that's key because what does your elbow have that your, your fist doesn't? Well, direct bone contact because you got gloves on, right? So when you're able to land those elbows, you cut your opponent up. It just hits a little bit harder, especially on the ground. Uh, and, you know, when you're able to land that kind of stuff, those damaging shots, they, they add up in the eyes of the judges. So he does a good job with the elbow-heavy style, and I like that a lot. Now, when it comes to Rocha, I think he's a much better striker here, skill for skill, and it's probably not close. He's got tons of volume. He works the body very well, and he can do it in combination. That is beautiful. I love to see it. He gets a little reckless at times, but he does a really good job of throwing a ton of volume, landing body shots, doing what he needs to do. The problem is he ends up in a lot of bad spots on the ground, and he gets taken down a lot. He gets thrown. You know, He'll do some wild something on the feet and end up on the mat. But he does a really good job of fighting out of it, and it shows that he has really good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He just doesn't use it offensively as much. He uses it often defensively. He'll use it. He'll use an offensive move to get out of a position and then back to his feet, like a roll for a submission. Realistically, if he gets the submission, great. But he's really trying to get that back to his feet so he can strike. And he is the better striker in this matchup. For me, I've got a side with the grappler in Bittencourt Costa. I think Costa gets it done. I think he's going to be able to use his grappling, get on top, and use that pressure and that that constant elbow barrage that he puts forward. And I'm taking Costa in this one. I have no idea what the odds are. A lot of people have been saying Rocha is probably going to be the favorite because I've heard a lot of people talking about picking Rocha. But give me Costa. Let me know who you have. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Like this video on your way out because it does help the channel a ton. And I'll see you in the next breakdown.